Hello and welcome. Today we are learning about classes and factory functions in JavaScript. Let's get started. Let's get started with JavaScript classes. The JavaScript class syntax really didn't come about until ES6 in 2015. We'll start a pizza class and I'll explain this. The, uh, the JavaScript class syntax is really syntactic sugar, and that means it's not changing what happens under the hood or what was already happening in JavaScript. This is just a different way for us to lay out our features. It's a new syntax, but it doesn't change any of the actual functionality of JavaScript. Um, we'll start with a constructor and put our properties in here. And we have to use the keyword this, so we'll have a size for the pizza, and we'll put medium. And then we want a crust for the pizza. And we'll put original. And now we'll put in a method. Let's have a bake method. Notice we don't have to use the function keyword. We just name the method. And in this method, we're going to log to the console a template literal. And we'll say baking a. Now we'll put our this.size. And then we'll put this dot crust crust pizza that looks good to me and we'll save our class again this is a blueprint for creating an object now when we create the object and we'll call this my pizza we use the new keyword and we're creating a new pizza and then after we create the pizza object we'll go my pizza dot bake and we'll see what we get in the console and we have baking a medium original crust pizza well that worked out great but what if we wanted to pass in some values as we create the object let's do that with a pizza type value what type of pizza do we want to make and we'll start out here with this dot type equals pizza type in the constructor so you can see we Ooh, a typo there. You can see we pass in the pizza type to the constructor when the object is created, and then it is set setting type to the pizza type. And so now we can say baking a medium original, and now we can refer to our type. And we'll save that. And now, ooh, undefined because we didn't pass in the parameter actually when we created the object yet. So let's put in a lowercase pepperoni. I like pepperoni. Hope you do too. There we go. Baking a medium original pepperoni crust pizza. And that is how you pass in a parameter and actually build your JavaScript class to accept a parameter. And of course it can accept more than one as well. So let's do that. Let's say we're going to not set a medium pizza. We're going to go pizza size, and then we'll need to pass that in as well. So pizza size, and now when we call that, we'll say small. And now we're baking a small original pepperoni crust. Pepperoni crust? <laughs> we should say small pepperoni, original crust pizza. I just caught that. And that's not so much a coding error as it uh, just doesn't read correctly. Fix the order of that. Baking a small pepperoni original crust pizza. And there you have a class structure, a blueprint or template for an object. And now you know how to pass parameters in when you create the new object and you use the new keyword to do that. And then you can call methods as usual. I guess the one thing we didn't do is log a specific property if we wanted to do that but we could also do that like my pizza dot type and log that to the console and there we get pepperoni as expected with javascript we can change the values of a property just through dot notation so for example we'll use my pizza and we'll set the type once again and this time we'll go supreme save that 
And now in the console, we get baking a small Supreme original crust pizza and then log Supreme to the console as well after that. However, this is not desirable. We don't really want to access those properties directly like that. And so to prevent that from happening, or really JavaScript doesn't prevent it from happening, just more of a naming, uh, well, not a naming convention, we'll get to that. It's just a, a keyword and a, a concept to understand, and that is the getter and setter. So we can use the keyword get. Now we can't refer directly to the name. We don't want to use the exact name again. So instead of just saying crust, for example, I'm going to say get pizza crust. And it'll look like a method when we set this. And here we'll just say return this.crust. And now we also want a setter. So we'll say set pizza crust. And now here we'll put a parameter of pizza crust inside. And we'll set this.crust equals pizza crust. Now we can use dot notation with pizza crust to set the value. So we'll go uh, my pizza dot pizza crust equals, and let's make a sausage pizza. And now if we want to return that, we'll just use dot notation again, and we'll say pizza crust. Now when I save the file, Oh, sausage is not defined. Ha, <laughs> I needed to put that in quotes. There we go. And baking a small pepperoni sausage crust pizza. <laughs> oh, I'm not thinking this morning. Here we go. Let's make a thin crust pizza. Baking a small pepperoni thin crust pizza. Thin. Very nice. So that's how a getter and setter works. However, this is not usually what I do. I do like to refer to the name directly. And there is an easy workaround for this. Instead of using the get and the set keyword, and I know I'm not the only one that does this, I just create a method called get crust. And then I create a method called set crust. And of course, that does not interfere by having the same name as crust, so it causes no problem there. And at the same time, it's a method that is read easily when I read the code. So this changes how we interact just a little bit though. So instead of my pizza dot pizza crust, this is my pizza dot set crust, and we call it like a method. So we use the operators at this point, and we have my pizza set crust, and I'm setting it to a thin value. And then when I get the crust, say my pizza dot get crust. And again, I have to put the operator parentheses after that to actually get the value return. So I'm calling these as methods because that's what they are. But they do the same thing and they are more readable inside my code. There we go, baking a small pepperoni thin crust pizza. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add one more getter and setter for practice. And this time we're going to add a new property as well. Uh, pizza always has toppings, so let's go this toppings equals and set it equal to an empty array. So when the uh, pizza object is first created, my pizza, it has no toppings. There are no elements in the array. So let's go ahead and add a getter and a setter for those. And I'll use uh, the method I described, which is actually creating methods. So I'll say get toppings. And at this point, I will say return this dot, whoop, dot toppings. And for set toppings, this is where we have to consider that arrays are different. And here we'll include a topping. And at this point, we'll say this dot toppings dot push. And we're going to push the new topping into our array save that much and then down here instead of getting the crust we'll go ahead and well let's we need to set a topping first right so we'll say my pizza dot set toppings and now since I was so set on having sausage on the pizza earlier I'll add sausage as a topping and then we can do that again 
and use set toppings, and I'll add pallets. And now instead of get crust, we'll use get toppings. And we'll save this. And we look at the console and it, our get toppings returns our array with sausage and olives that will now be on our pizza. All right, let's remove a lot of things and simplify our class because we're going to use it as a parent class or we could call it a super class. We'll keep the size constructor so we'll still pass in the uh, pizza size parameter, I mean, inside the constructor. And we'll get rid of this dot type. We'll get rid of the toppings. And we'll keep the get crust and set crust. We'll remove the get toppings and set toppings. We can keep uh, bake. Well, we don't really need to. We don't need a, a method for this example. So let's just create a little extra room here. So. Here is a basic pizza class. We have our constructor that accepts a parameter of pizza size. And then we also have a value set for the crust property. And we have a get crust and a set crust method for the pizza class. Now this would be the parent class, or we could also refer to it as the super class. Now, if we want to create a child class, we use the class syntax and we'll say specialty pizza and then use the keyword extends pizza. Now in the constructor before we can use the keyword this in a child class we have to call with the keyword super. We essentially are calling the constructor of the parent class or the super class if you will and now we should pass in what the super class needs at this point, and this would be pizza size. And now to have pizza size available, our constructor here should also accept a pizza size. And I should put that in lowercase to match up. There we go, pizza size in the constructor of the child class. And now we could have something else here, like let's set the type for this specialty pizza because we don't have type in the super class anymore. And we'll call this the works. This is a specialty pizza. And now we'll give this a method called slice. And we'll log to the console inside of our method, template literal, and we'll say our this dot type pizza. Oh, we should go ahead and use our uh, inherited size as well, or the size that comes from the constructor of the parent, the super, as we say here. And we're calling this constructor method by using the super keyword in the constructor. And again, this super keyword has to be uh, used in the constructor before we can ever use the keyword this. And so we'll go this dot size as that comes from the parent, are the works pizza, or be are the works, and whatever we call in, whatever we pass in as the size, so say medium, are the works medium pizza has 12 slices. A medium should have more like eight. Let's do that. Medium has eight slices. And we'll save that. And now, something we can do, we don't have to create the parent object. We don't have to use this super class to create an object. We're just using this blueprint. So the parent is a blueprint. So we can instantiate an object just based on the child class. So we'll call this my specialty. We'll just call it my specialty for short. And then we'll set that to a new specialty pizza, and we better pass in what size, right? So I think we were gonna pass in medium. And now we could say my specialty dot slice, which is the method we gave the child class, the specialty pizza class right here. And we'll go ahead and save all of that. And now we see in the console, are the works medium pizza has eight slices. 
So just to recap what we did, we created a parent class, just a generic pizza class, and used that as a blueprint. We did not ever instantiate just a pizza object. We just used this as a blueprint. And then we used class, defined a new class, and the keyword extends to create a child class based on the parent, or you could say super class. And once we're inside the constructor of the child class, we need to use the keyword super, and that keyword calls the constructor of the parent. And we needed to pass in pizza size, not only in our constructor for the child, but we needed to pass it in when we called super because the constructor up here expects pizza size. And then we gave it a type property, and then we called all of those properties, we used all of those properties as we called the method slice. And now we defined a new specialty pizza object called my specialty, and we called the slice method, and we get that in the console. Now that we've covered child classes, let's go ahead and remove this extra subclass and come back to our basic pizza class here. We have the constructor that accepts a pizza size, we have a crust set, and we have a get crust and set crust method. Just a, a simple blueprint for an object here. And now let's talk about the naming conventions because we had previously discussed, at least just a little bit, about not accessing the properties or setting their values directly. That's why we have, say, the get crust and set crust methods here. Uh, but JavaScript does allow this. So we needed to indicate to other developers we're working with, anybody else that may see our code, that we intend these properties to be private. That means they should not be modified outside of the class. They should only be modified within the class using the set crust method, for example, would then modify this. So of course we need to update this as well, and we should update it in our get method also. So this underscore essentially indicates to others that these are intended to be private. And there is another way to create objects in JavaScript that solves this problem, because even though the intentions are good here, we could still access these properties with the underscore and change the values. And we could still get the property value as well uh, just using dot notation. So the, these are good intentions and a naming convention, but it didn't really solve the problem. So there is another way that we have fixed this problem in JavaScript. To demonstrate how this has been solved in JavaScript, I'm just going to go ahead and comment out this class for now. We don't want to get rid of it because we'll use it again in the near future. But just above what we've been doing, I'm going to go ahead and put in a factory function. And a factory function is another way to create an object in JavaScript. And as you might have guessed, it simply uh, is used as a factory for object creation based on the name. So let's just call this pizza factory. And then this will accept a pizza size as well. Let's model it after our class. And now we, in here we can define a couple of variables inside the function. And we'll say pizza, well not type, let's go with crust again. And we'll put original, we'll just model it after our other class. And then we can say size. And of course we'll set that to our pizza size parameter. And now we can also return a method inside and this method we're going to go with bake like we had previously had in our class. And this will look a little different, but this is truly a method, of course, which is a function as well. So this is returning a bake function from our factory function. And here we'll say console.log and we'll use a template literal and we'll say baking a, uh, let's say, size. Notice I'm not using the keyword this. Baking a medium. And now we can say crust. And then we'll say crust pizza. And that looks pretty good. Let's save that. Oh, I've got a 
syntax error just because it didn't like that semicolon in there. There we go. We save that. And now we can define, once again, say my pizza, and we'll set it equal to a pizza factory. And now our pizza factory wants a pizza size, so let's say small. And now we can go my pizza dot bake, call that method. And we look in the console and we've got baking a small original crust pizza. Now let's talk about the difference in using a factory function. And these are supported. This is nothing new. This was used long before ES6 as well. This was a solution to a problem of not being able to create objects that had private uh, fields in them, you know, properties that were not accessible uh, outside of the object. And, and sometimes that is desirable. That, that is actually what we want. And what we are trying to imitate by using naming conventions and getters and setters inside of our class object. But this actually does what we want because you cannot access the size variable outside of this code block. That's why we learned about scope. And you cannot access the crust variable outside of this code block. So it is contained, it's inside of the pizza factory function. And that's the only way it can be accessed. So we have to return a function that uses those variables that we set inside this code block. And that's what we did with our bake method essentially right here. And then you can see when we set my pizza equal to the pizza factory function and feed it the parameter it needs, we can use dot notation and call the bake method that we have set on my pizza. It all works as intended and we get the benefit of truly having these private variables, or we could say private properties, private fields that are not accessible through dot notation as they would be if we just create a class. So this is the workaround that's been going on in JavaScript for a long time. And now I'm going to show you an update from JavaScript itself that uh, it's fairly new within the last year. So it's not, it does not have the support that factory functions do. Now we've said the class syntax has been supported since ES6 in 2015, but JavaScript continues to advance. And what I'm about to show you has just been added within about the last year, and it does not yet have 100% support through all browsers. I'll start by removing our factory function. And now I'll uncomment our JavaScript class. Save that just so we're back to our basic class. And now what I'm about to show you is that classes now support public and private fields in JavaScript. So instead of a value that is static, in other words, I'm not sending in a parameter when we call the constructor for the pizza class, we're just setting it to original to start out with. And let's go ahead and get rid of these naming conventions as well. Again, those were to indicate it was supposed to be private, but now we support a private field, so we do not need to do that. We'll start out with a public field, and that is anything that is static, that we're not feeding in. We could go ahead and declare a public field above the constructor and say crust equals original. Now we'll remove this from the constructor. Any uh, property that we're going to go ahead and set with a parameter, we'll leave inside of the constructor. But let's go ahead and set a private field as well. A private field is indicated with the hash. And we'll say, uh, let's go with sauce. And we'll just call it traditional sauce. Probably red tomato sauce, but uh, we'll just call that traditional. Now that is the indication of a private field. And so we've set that on our class and we have a public field of crust. And now we also have size. And we're leaving size as a property that we're setting with the parameter right now. We could also make this private if we want to. And if we wanted to do that, we need to declare it at the top first as a private field if we were to do that. And then we would refer to it inside the class with the hash like this. Um, well, let's go ahead and do that just so we get the example of that. 
Now we don't have uh, this dot crust referred to. Well, we should actually, and be able to change that with our get and set. And let's just leave it at that. And oh, let's go ahead and add something that uses the size and the sauce. So let's let's go ahead and add a declaration. We'll just call this a, a method named um, here you go. And now inside of the here you go method, we'll put a console log and we'll go ahead and use a template literal and we'll say, here's your uh, crust, like spell crust. Here's your original. And now we'll say this sauce. Oh, you know what? We probably need this with the crust as well. There we go. This crust, this sauce, sauce, and now we'll go ahead and use size. This size, and now pizza. That looks good. Save that. No errors, that's great. So now we'll go ahead and define my pizza again. And we'll say that equals a new pizza object. Now we need to put in a size here. We'll put in a large this time. And now we can call the here you go method on my pizza. Save that and we go, here's your original traditional sauce, large pizza. Now, a couple of things about these private fields. The public field, we could probably still access. Let's go ahead and try this. I haven't used these as much because they're not supported as well, but I wanted to give you a look as I'm sure the support will increase. So console.log mypizza.crust. Since it's a public field, it should still allow us to access that through dot notation. Yes, it does. So we got the original value. Again, that's not how we want to do that. We would want to use the get crust method I created, and that still returns original. That's great. So that is a public field. It's still available to everybody through dot notation, but the private field, let's go ahead and try to access sauce. Now, we would do that without the hash to access the sauce property. We save that and it shows undefined. Now to just show you what you would get if you tried to access it with the hash here, it thinks you're going to define it. And it says private field sauce must be declared in an enclosing class. Now an enclosing class is like what you see here with our pizza class. And since I have the bracket pair colorizer extension, you can see it draws the line all the way down to the closing curly brace for our class. That's what it means by and declared in an enclosing class because it thinks we're trying to declare it right there. So we would still just be accessing it outside of the class with dot notation. And you can see it does not allow that because it's undefined. However, our public uh, field, crust, no problem accessing that. It delivers original there as you'd expect. So private and public fields are now supported and they must be declared above the constructor, and then you can still use them in the constructor, as I am here with the pizza size, and then you can access both public, like crust, and private within the class, but you can only access the public field outside of the class. Here's caniuse.com, and this is a great site to check how much support you have for features that are new, that have not been around that long. You can actually ch check for features that have been around for a long time, as far as that goes. But uh, let's check these private and public fields in classes. So we'll say public field class. Let's see what we get. There we go. JavaScript classes, public class fields. In the USA, we've got 44, almost 45% coverage, global 72. You can see the main browsers, Safari, the latest version of Safari, just released September 15th, 2020, supports the public uh, fields. And Chrome has supported it for a while. Edge is now based on Chrome, so you've got about the same support there. But let's see when that kicked in. Um, 
the latest, or I guess the earliest release, January 14th of 2020. We've got Firefox, September 2019. Firefox, of course, the Mozilla developers behind that. Uh, that's usually pretty good with features. Chrome adapts pretty quickly. Safari is always usually a little late to the party. Um, then we've got some support, and then we show mobile support over here. But you can see we don't have the full support we want at only 44%. Now let's go ahead and look at private, which I'm sure is very similar. Private's just a little less, almost 43%. And you can see Firefox isn't supporting private at all. So that contradicts what I just said about uh, them adapting this fast. The Edge is uh, holding pace there with Chrome because they're based on the same uh, engine behind the browser. Safari, uh, it's about the same point there for private and public, and we're seeing about the rest. There's the Android browser, Chrome for Android. Uh, where Here is iOS, it's about the same point Safari was. So again, in the low 40s for percent in the U.S., and high 60s to low 70s globally. So you do not have full support for these features yet, but I am sure they will continue to expand and be supported by more and more browsers. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.